First, man, thank you so much for doing this interview, but more importantly, thank you for helping me out. For folks who don't realize this, when I was coming down to Rivley, I wasn't sure where I was going. First person I speak with is you, and here you were helping me out trying to say, yeah, talk to this person, that person, that person. You didn't even know me, man. Are you always helping people out like that? I didn't know you, but you know what? As a good human being like I am, I saw that you look kind of confused, maybe. I always look confused, man. You didn't know where to go, so I thought I could find where you were going because I overheard I overheard what you were saying. Sorry to eavesdrop, but... But, oh. but I hope that it ended up helping you in the end. It did, because now we get a chance to sit and we get a chance to talk. You seem like somebody, like you just said, man, you were listening and you're aware of your surroundings. Does that help you through your music when it comes to writing and being aware of what's going on in the world today? Yes, I think it is is a gift and a curse because it's a gift because I'm super aware, almost too much aware. So it's like, you know, it sometimes interferes with my day-to-day -day life, but for artistic purposes, it's, uh, it's excellent, you know. Well, I got to ask you, man, how does it feel? I mean, the Alan Slate Juno Master Class is going going on. You're part of this. We're at the Rivley. You're going to be part of a showcase. You are representing, of course, with the hip hop. Um, how does it feel being part of all this and knowing that, man, you are going to be leading into the red and white going to the 2017, 2018 new music, hip hop, Canadian, and it's all you, man. Yeah, it just, it feels incredible, honestly. Uh, you know, when I got the call, I was kind of surprised because they said they were going to call between three and five. And uh, I got the call at about five to five. So they, they, they really, they really had me on pins and needles until the last second. You know, I was about to binge eat a whole frozen pizza because I was like, I lost. Oh, I don't care anymore. But you know, no, if feels great all jokes aside uh, especially great to represent Halifax the East Coast and I uh, represent hip-hop the only hip-hop artist here and of course going to the Junos in Vancouver is gonna be a blessing it's a beautiful city I've been there before I played there so I'm excited to go back for Canada's biggest you know award show you were so funny man even sitting there talking to you you sound like you're rapping still too man that thing like you were born with this weren't you I don't know if I was born with it. You know what? Because I really did work hard on it. I, I've seen a lot of people with natural ability, better than mine, you know, start off way ahead of me. But, you know, I kind of slowly climbed and, and I, I feel that hard work trumps talent most of the time. How did you get involved with this? You mentioned about Halifax, and people aren't, I think people are now realizing Halifax has been like a seed that's growing when it comes to the hip hop scene. Yes, hip hop, uh, hip hop scene is amazing. We have uh, countless, countless uh, number of dope artists, and it's, it's always been that way. Um, and I, I just feel like it's, it's just a blessing, and it's only going to grow bigger and bigger from here, really. What kind of stories do you like to tell through your music? Uh, I like to tell personal experiences that I go through. So any day-to-day -day life might lead to a song, just say a conversation or just something me walking by, observing something, or maybe it's a thought of my own. You know, anything. Like I said, uh, my mind's always working. I'm always aware of my surroundings. And sometimes when I'd like to shut it up, it still won't. So it's a blessing, though. You know, people watch these movies and stuff, and they think that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, that when you're into this, there's this, the competition, there's the, you know, one-on-one -on -one battle. Did you have to go through any of that stuff, or did you? You did. Yeah, yeah, I definitely had to go through that. That's how I got my start. And a, a lot of people these days, a lot of kids these days don't realize that. When I was 14, 15, you had to go into the club, and you had to battle the best in the city. You had to line up in front of everybody. You didn't know who you were going to battle, and they would put your opponent in front of you, and you would have to chew through everyone to get to the last man standing. And I did that often, uh, you know, I would sneak in the club or get in various ways, and I had to do that, and that's how I kind of proved myself and put myself on the map. But now you could just post a song on the internet and get your buzz, but you know, not that I'm old, I'm 28, but back when I was 14, years like that, you had to go through that, and you really had to, you really had to compete and show that you wanted it and show that you were better than other people. You proved that because you got a new album out, plus, of course, you got a new single. Talk about that, please. Yes, new single with uh, great friends of mine. Been working with them for a while. Neon Dreams, they're actually doing very great right now. Love those guys. Man. Yeah, yeah, they're incredible. So this song is called Confessions. We wrote it at a songwriter's camp with uh, a fantastic country writer of all, of all things, Gordy Sampson, genius. He wrote Jesus Take the Wheel, among other hits. So he helped us with that. And... Uh, Looking forward to it. My first ever time crossing over the top 40 radio. So shout out to Neon Dreams, Gordy Sampson. Um, looking forward to seeing how it does on October 30th. And that's when it hits the, the airwaves. Amazing that how you're representing the uh, red and white. Plus the fact that here you are with hip hop. You're working with a country artist. You're with a sort of like a, a, a rock 
pop um, EDM group. Like you, you, you were going after all the flavors, man. I mean, I, I always try to never put any labels on music. I always just say, if it's good music, it's good music. I've done works with anyone from from battle rappers to all the way to Heather Rankin of the Rankin family to whoever. If it's good music. I don't like to put a label on it, and I'm down for it. Are we going to hear good music here? Because, of course, you're going to be showcasing at the Rivley, man. And you're representing here at one of the most iconic venues across this uh, country. Yes, yes. It's a blessing. Like I said, I can't be grateful enough of all the stuff I've learned this weekend. And to be performing here, like you said, it's just an honor, man. So uh, I look forward to hitting the stage. I'm looking forward to it, man. So for us to follow you in 2017 and 18 social media, where do we go so we know what is going on in your life and that you can bless us with your music? Yes. Quake Matthews everywhere at Quake Matthews Twitter Instagram whatever Grant whatever the new one of tomorrow is it's always gonna be Quake Matthews you can find me there I'll be anywhere you find me just search for Quake Matthews my friend thank you so much and again thank you for helping me out the fact that I was lost all over the place yes, yes, incredible thank you man I appreciate it